Okay guys, now we are ready to talk about equilibrium for a rigid body. Now the last chapter, chapter 4, it's everything we'll discuss is getting ready for chapter 5. Okay, talk about moments, right, and couple moments, okay, and all the equations for it and simplifications of the moment force system and all that. Now all that are preparing yourself for this chapter. Okay, and and since we've done all the preparation, chapter four, and also chapter three, and also chapter two, actually, this chapter is actually quite short. Okay, because the equations is really nothing new. Okay, all we're doing here, this chapter, is just put everything together and analyze a rigid body. Okay, so this is a really important chapter, but everything we've done so far, okay, are equally important. Okay, now recall what we've done before, chapter 3, equilibrium for a particle. Right? Particle only has one equation okay, for equilibrium condition, that is sum of forces equals zero. Now, this is a factor equation, right? So depending on whether you're dealing with 2D or 3D, you have you know, a number of equations, you know, scale equations to work in, right? x, y, or z, right? so 3D. Okay. So now we're dealing with rigid bodies. Okay, and once again, the major difference between a rigid body and a particle is that in rigid body we consider now the rotational effect, right? Or the tendency to want to rotate. Okay? Even though the actual rigid body may not be rotating, I say, you know, a calculator, right? So a calculator can be considered as a particle if the rotation doesn't matter at all. Okay, we're not. We don't care about it, the rotational uh, effect. But as a rigid body, now we need to be considering you know, the tendency to want to rotate. Let's say if I pivot it at this point, right, or or at this left hand side. Okay, this is glued to a wall or something. Okay, so if I apply a force down here, right. So the tendency, right, for this uh, this rigid body to want to rotate must be taken into consideration okay, um, if you consider this as a rigid body. So, now as a rigid body, other than this sum of forces equation, we must consider the second equation, which is sum of all moments about any point, any point O, okay, and this point O can be anywhere on the rigid body or outside the rigid body. It doesn't matter, okay? As long as it sums this moment about some point, okay? And they all go to zero, okay? So these two equations together give you the equilibrium condition for a rigid body, okay? So this sum of forces equation it's pretty straightforward, just like before. Yeah, okay, just a particle. Alright? So you sum all the forces up, right, in each direction, right? And set them equal to zero and that's it. But this sum of moment, okay, is also a vector equation. Okay, moment is a vector, right? It has direction. The sum of moment, this moment includes the moment created by each of the forces, okay, that is R cross F term, as well as any applied moment, applied couple moment. Okay, so that's where we bring in chapter four, right? All the couple moment stuff, right? So everything, all the moments, okay, must equal to zero, right? So they cancel out each other. So these two are your equation, okay? for the whole analysis for rigid body, okay? It's really, really simple. Two equations govern everything, okay? But realize that these two are vector equations, okay? You're dealing with vectors now. Okay, so let's consider maybe the most simple case, right? 2D, right? In 2D space. These two equations will reduce to these. The sum of forces equation will have x and y components, okay, so each 
equation now is the scalar equation, right? So now you can plug in numbers, right? And then the sum of moment equation, now it's a scalar also, the sum of moment about, again, about any point. Okay, any, yeah, I just I'm call it A, all right? Point A for any point, right? Again, this point can be in, on the body, or outside the body, doesn't matter, okay? So now, you're dealing with scalar equations, all right? So these comes from these original general equations, right? For 2D case. So let's say I have a rigid body, okay, any size, any shape, right? On the XY plane, okay, X and Y defined this way, okay? So this rigid body is subject to, let's say, four forces, okay? F1, 2, 3, and 4. Also, it's subject to two couple moments, okay? Applied moment, right? So these two and one of them two are couple moments. Right? So they are externally applied. Okay? As if just recall like you know opening a, a vault, you know, a door or steering wheel, right? So you know the the, the forces that you apply, okay, are actually couple moments. Okay? So you're actually applying a couple moments. So those are applied, externally applied. So all these Okay, you draw the forces as well as the applied couple moments on this free body diagram. Okay, so <coughs> now back in chapter four, we talked about all the you know the forces and all the the couple moments and how to reduce them and all that. Now there's one more category of, of forces and moments. Okay, that when you talk about before we can actually start analyzing. And equilibrium for a body. That is reactions. Okay. So for any rigid body, there has to be some kind of reaction because you have to have some kind of support. Okay. So this means that let's say I have a rigid body, right? This sharpie right here. Okay. It's resting on a surface. So at this surface right here, the contact surface that's where the support takes place, okay? And even if, let's say, I'm holding this Sharpie right here, the point of contact is where the support takes place, right? And for any rigid body, there has to be some kind of support, okay? Let's say a bridge, right? A bridge is sitting on typically two, uh, two platforms, okay? Let's say the edge of a cliff, right? So at those points, those uh, support points, they are actually supports. And whenever you have support, you always have reactions. Okay? So different kinds of support will have different kinds of reactions. So if we look at page 202 or 203, it's the, the whole list of different kinds of support and different reactions. Okay? And the most common ones that you might encounter would be something like, you know, let's say you have a rigid body, let's say it's just a metal bar, okay? and one side of it is resting on um, one point, okay? Let's say something like this, okay? So it's resting on it, it's, it's just, and nothing is constraining it, right? So it's just sitting on it, okay? And then let's say on this other end, it's pivoted, okay? So it's free to rotate, okay? So it can go up and down like this, okay? So. Well, let's consider this first, right? The simpler. So this, it's just simply resting on a point, one single point contact. So the reaction at this point, while this rigid body is in contact with this support right here, so the only reaction is straight up. Okay? So that's your reaction. Okay, reaction. Okay. There's no horizontal reaction. Okay, because there's nothing that's resisting okay, the uh, the motion you know, of this rigid body. Okay, so you can think of reaction, reaction forces as any kind of resistance. Okay, resistance to the motion or, or to the potential motion of the rigid body. Okay, so now this pivot right here. Okay, so this rigid body is free to rotate like this. Right. 
So, at this pivot point, okay, let's look at the resistance. You know, think about it. Okay. We're resisting, we're constraining the motion of this rigid body at this point okay, in both x and y direction. So therefore, in each direction, you have a reaction force. Okay. Call it Rx. Reaction Ry. Okay. Because we're constraining this point in either x or y direction. So this point right here cannot move, cannot displace or translate in x or y direction. So it's fixed there. But it's free to rotate. Okay? What if? What if say I have the same rigid body right here? Instead of pivoting it, now I don't allow this to rotate at all. That is, maybe I glue it to a wall. Okay? In that case, this is the only point where support is located, right? So, what about the reaction? Let's say, at this point right here, I don't allow this point to move to the right or left or up or down. Right? So therefore, I have reaction force also Rx, okay? and then Ry is the same thing. I ran out of space, so I, I can just draw this down here. Right? So reaction force X, reaction force Y. Okay? Right? I'm constraining it. Right? So I'm, so this this rigid body is is resisting the constraint. Okay? By having these two reaction forces, but also at the same time, since I'm not allowing this rigid body to rotate like this case up here, right? So, think about the rotational motion, rotational resistance. So, at this point, this rigid body will also have a counter moment, right? To take into account the resistance to want to rotate, okay? Because I don't allow this rigid body to rotate. So, the resistance to rotate simply in the form of moment. I said this is you know, uh, point A, right? So, okay, so these three are the reaction, okay? These are the reaction forces. This is the reaction moment, okay? So all of these, okay? Let me use blue for, for this moment, okay? Just be consistent with this picture down here. So all these reactions must also appear in this free body diagram for your rigid body. Okay? So all these forces include reaction forces as well as any applied force, external forces. Let's say you know if you push the rigid body, right? So this is applied, externally applied force. The mass of this rigid body will also be considered um, external effect. So the mass will have okay, a weight, right? So the weight is considered external force, right? And friction, for example, okay? So it's considered contact force, okay? So any external force, as well as applied moment, okay? For example, couple moment, right? Okay? Or reaction moment. So with all these in place, now here are the solution steps. Okay, it's very very logical. It's identical to how you solve for particles in back in chapter three. You define a coordinate system first, and then you draw a free body diagram. Right, so just the rigid body without any attachment. Okay, free it up, and then draw the forces and apply couple moments including reaction, solve for it, and you bring in geometry, I say trigonometry, okay, if necessary. And that's it. Next we'll look at example.